tomorrow. The Royal Winnipeg Ballet begins their 80th anniversary season with the Canadian premiere of Greg Horseman's La Bayadere. Joining me in studio this morning is RWB Artistic Director Andre Lewis. Good morning. Welcome back to the show. Good morning. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here on this cool, crisp autumn morning in Winnipeg. Uh, glad, glad you're here. Uh, firstly, let me begin. Congratulations on the milestone year, 80 years. Yeah, that's quite amazing. What what an achievement. Um, it really is exciting. And uh, there was a, a stunning video that was produced introducing this, this 80th anniversary year. And uh, it begins with the line, our home is the prairies, the world is our stage. Of course, the RWB, a treasured part of the Winnipeg cultural scene and a dynamic member of the world dance community. I guess this first production, uh, a new telling of La Bayadere, fits that, that very idea, doesn't it? Absolutely. And it's part of our classical heritage, if you will. That's how we started at the Royal Winnipeg Ballet, at the Winnipeg Ballet Club. But if you loved Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, you will love La Bayadere. The first gentleman who do it to choreograph it was Petipa. And then it was adapted again. And Greg Horseman has uh, restaged it, added choreography, but very much in the feeling and uh, choreographic style of Petipa. So if you love some of those classics, you will absolutely adore La Bayadere. Oh, what, what can you tell us about this production? Because this is a, a joint production, right? Yes. We, uh, it happens between West Australian Ballet, Queensland Ballet, and the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. I happened to be in New York, I think it was six or seven years ago, I was discussing uh, with a gentleman from West Australian Ballet and said, you know, the idea of doing a Bayadere together. And then we, we just joined a, a group of three of us and say, why don't we do it and pool our resources artistically and financially in order to make it happen. And that's really the way of doing things today in many ways. We were, we were chatting off the air um, well, before we went to air, talking about kind of 2019, the, the world's smaller than it ever was, and, and joint productions being uh, a way for, for companies of various sizes to stage new works that wouldn't otherwise happen. And of course, the RWB last year with The Wizard of Oz, another great example of that. Um, this, this particular uh, uh, telling of La Bayadere, you mentioned it kind of keeps true to the Petit Pas choreography. How, how does it differ? I'm, I'm curious with, with Horseman's work. Well, uh, Greg has added uh, complexities, if you will, to it. Uh, it's a love story, ultimately, uh, and it, it, it's, it, it's, it's painted against the backdrop of India. So there are some really interesting uh, elements to it. Uh, and it's about Nikia, this temple dancer or temple maiden, it's called. Uh, in the old days, and uh, he has weaved this wonderful, very powerful, and really with this incredible ending to the story. So, uh, yeah, I, I think Greg has done an amazing job with it. And, you know, when you look at all of the classics we've done, we've adapted them, we've organized them uh, slightly differently, but they still have the spirit of the original intent of the work, and it's made for classically trained dancers. So if you love ballet in its classical forms, you will love uh, La Bayadère. Is that one of the reasons why you chose to open this 80th anniversary year with La Bayadère? Because it is a, a classical ballet for the RWB to dance? Yes, and I felt that uh, La Bayadère, or classical ballet, if you will, is the foundation of the Royal Winnipeg Ballet. That Without classical ballet, there would not be a Royal Winnipeg Ballet. And after all, we have the word ballet in our uh, <laughs> so that's it's not the only thing we do we of course we have a, a, the rest of the season is it shows a different aspect of the RWB we're doing a nutcracker actually Evelyn Hart is coming to do four old legs in Very our exciting. founder studios a wonderful partnership with James Kadalka who did Vespers a few mm -hmm, years ago mm -hmm. we're doing nutcracker Rosalka is going to be with us again yeah. on stage we're doing Moulin Rouge which is a very contemporary powerful love story and we're going to finish with uh, a retrospective of the, some of the works that were brought by former artistic director like Arnold Spohr with Rodeo, a work that we constantly get asked to perform again. Uh, John Meehan's, when he was artistic director, commissioned uh, Angels in the Architecture, right. Aaron Copeland's beautiful, beautiful yeah. music and so fitting for the RWB. And Henny Jurians, who was artistic for a short time, uh, unfortunately, uh, due to a tragic accident, uh, but brought Seventh Symphony, an acquisition of, uh, from his days when he was at the Dutch National Ballet. 
There's lots to look forward to in this season, a, a milestone year, as I mentioned. Uh, while I've got you here, I'd like to ask you just another question or two. Um, this is a season which features Julian Pelicano as as principal conductor. What what does it mean to have him on board with the RWB? It's absolutely wonderful. I know he's going to be uh, at the studios here tomorrow, I think, talking mm -hmm. with uh, your audiences. But it's wonderful working with Julian. You know, we've been very fortunate. The last few years, we, we've certainly worked quite a bit with him and with Earl Safford, who used to be, of course, the conductor for many years. But it's nice to have a, 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 a stable, if you will, of those incredible talent. And Julian is an incredible talent, and we're thrilled to be working with him. And he's going to be doing more and more, and he's now our principal conductor. He most certainly is. And he just brings such a professionalism and, uh, and such a positive attitude. Joie de vivre. He really has it. He really, really does. He's just wonderful to be around. Yes. Um, this 80th anniversary season, um, uh, unfortunately, will be without, though, Kathleen Richardson, who passed just a few weeks ago. I, I was wondering if you could just give a, a few words on that to close out this interview. Uh, well, certainly. It was, uh, it was a shock to me. I had uh, known Kathleen for for many years, probably 40 years almost, since I came here in 1975. But uh, when I became director, she, very early on, she invited me. She, she happened to be at our studios. I was there late. She was there with uh, one of the f uh, her uh, her uh, family, one of the family members uh, who was taking classes, a young, uh, young girl. And she says, Andre, why don't we get together for dinner? So, so, so uh, yes, yes, Miss Richardson. And then we continued that tradition for 25 years, essentially. Every three months, we would get together, essentially. So, you know what? She'll be terribly missed. I mean, she was such a, a strength and an indomitable spirit, but with such grace, such quality, such poise, and and you know, believing that that the art form, that ballet could bring people together, could enrich the city. And what I love the most about her says no matter what, you know, there were so ups and downs at, at the RWB during her time there. She never, never stopped believing in the organization. And, you know, she stood steadfast with the RWB through thick and through thin. <laughs> Yeah, just a, a remarkable figure she was, playing such an instrumental role in the making uh, of RWB into to the company that it is today. Absolutely. I Without her, I don't know that we would have the recognition and the international uh, brand that uh, we currently enjoy. I mean, we do bring the name of Winnipeg, Manitoba in Canada. I think we've done it to over 500 uh, cities, 50 countries. So uh, it's quite remarkable. And, uh, and I think uh, Manitoba and Winnipeg and Canada should be very proud of the Royal Winnipeg Ballet and its thanks in great part to Kathleen Richardson and the Richardson family and many other families, of course, but Kathleen will be uh, terribly missed. Yeah, and what, what wonderful ambassadors you are and, and hoping you continue to do it for the next 80 years and beyond. Uh, Andre Lewis, thanks so much for coming by Classic 107 this morning. It's my pleasure. The Royal Winnipeg Ballet begins their 2019-20, their 80th anniversary season tomorrow at the Centennial Concert Hall. La Bayadere runs from uh, Wednesday through Sunday. For details, you can visit rwb.org.